I welcome you here today in this moment. May the words I share here be the light for your day and days ahead as an encouragement of inspiration. When I started out this year creating a video every Monday, I wasn't sure when I'd share this cardboard series with you. I knew eventually I would, and once I did, I wasn't aware I'd be sharing each piece individually. I seriously thought I'd share the fail of the series and then move on. Remember, it was a fail. Who wants to linger in that? Not me. The Lord had brighter plans for you and I. For that, I'm thankful and happy to follow His lead. I want to live in what He has in store. Sometimes we just want the floodgates to bust open and shout to the rooftops and tell all. Other times, boundaries linger to the Lord's liking. It's hard to process some people's loss when you've lost so deep yourself. Toss the heart of stone and the pile of rocks in the yard. Faithful is the steady net for His glory. If you don't think so, get out of your chair and reach to the sky. The beauty He never changes, yet our circumstances in life do. It's hard to think about the miracles you received aren't necessarily the same others will receive. The whale. Wash the poison of fear that's been poured over this life, this generation, Lord. May those around us see your goodness in our response to situations. May they be encouraged to seek your face in a depth of their situational pain where they break free and learn and grow on a level they didn't know was possible or see possible or even know they needed. Break their barriers for the lack of their understanding. Help them understand. Open their eyes and heart. Let them see the gold. Don't let people's needs just fall in your lap. Go looking to meet their needs. Ask God to give you eyes to see the needs, the hurt, the lack. Don't stand on your gifts alone. Break away and go see. Open our eyes, Lord. Allow us to see. It's not too late to have a breakthrough, connecting old things to new things. Helping us understand life stronger in His ways. We have to clear things out to a simpler life to experience His goodness. God is not a God of fast. He is slow and patient and persistent. People will come at you tell you you can't and shouldn't do something depending on what it is. There is a way, His way. Today's featured piece in the series, the cardboard series, Untold Stories, the featured piece is named Key Tags. It is made up of a mix of cardboard, paint, and colored pencils. Key Tags was created right after Famous Boundaries which Famous Boundaries is the individual piece that I will share with you next week. My observation doesn't see it looking like a key tag, but it feels like one. That's the part and the point of this series, to get some feelings out, healing, closure, release, freedom, wordless, so key tags it is, cardboard on cardboard, Secretly, this is my favorite of the series.
uneven edges, layers peaking, splashing, splashes of reflection, gold seals the deal. Okay, I'm going to get a little vulnerable here today. Sharing today this featured piece from the cardboard series, I sense the Lord whisper over me, it's okay even though this series is called Untold Stories. It's okay to share. You've heard me say a few times throughout this sharing this series, the last three years have been hard for my family. This series was a safe place for me to let go. Let go of the emotions without having to talk about it. From my own unhealed heart at the time and me being afraid of touching areas of others unhealed hearts and potentially sharing pieces of their stories they didn't want told or how the situation affected me and being afraid for even family members to find out how I felt or the effect on me the Lord tapped me and said, stop walking on eggshells. This is part of your story too. I'm not asking you to tell their sides of the story, how they were affected, how they processed, and if they are bothered by what you share, they need to come to me. So this is what I want to share. In 2020, just before the pandemic, began, my mom was diagnosed with breast cancer. I was there when she got the news. I sat with her and held her on a bench where we were sitting at, right after she got the news. I wanted to protect her and make it go away, kind of like if you had a cough or like if your kids get a cough and you want to come up with a home remedy to make the cough better. I wanted to create it a home remedy of the mind and emotional strength and make it go away. Well, that's not how it went down. And I knew that. I battled liver cancer 20 years prior. I knew that this wouldn't be that easy. I knew the ins and outs of cancer. Simply put, she had one chemo treatment in my presence and due to the lockdown, she was only allowed her husband in there to help steady her after uh, the lockdown. Chemo was brutal. She'd scream in pain and discomfort on the phone. I'd witnessed my mom through a lot over the years. The pain of loss, the pain of loss, losing my dad 20 plus years prior the pain of her breaking her back in a car wreck 10 years prior. The chemo pain was intense. I'd say more intense than the two major things I just mentioned she'd been through. I think it was more intense because it's what was in the moment. It was current. She made through chemo, had doctor's visits in between that no one was allowed to go in with her. A short time after chemo was complete, she was scheduled and had surgery, double mastectomy. One person was allowed to go in that day of surgery. She chose me. Recovery was long and hard for her due to other health issues, setting her healing process back. Doctor's appointments week after week after week. This went on for months. They let her rest a little bit, then she had radiation. In the midst of all that, she lost her best friend and was even unable to attend the funeral. And my father-in-law was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer a month after my mom, after my mom received her diagnosis of cancer. He received chemo. I worked at the family business in his place on treatment days. Once the tumor shrunk enough, a Whipple procedure was done. His body didn't accept this major surgery, like the family was so hopeful for. 
He was never able to return back to work. He was in and out of the hospital. Major depression from the 360 spin on his life. Therapy after therapy, physical therapy, to rebuild his strength. Feeding bag and so much more equaling 11 months of total hell for him, my husband, his mom, his sister, my kids, and me. I worked 10 of those 11 months in his place. On the 10th month, my stepdad fell 12 stories off of a shed. Mother had just finished up radiation a few months prior, and she was trying to get her life back together. He survived, but lives in pain to this day from the back surgery. I didn't return working for helping them with his recovery, and I needed recovery myself. On the 11th month for my father-in-law, he was rushed to the hospital after found nearly unresponsive. He stayed in a hospital for almost two months before his passing. He peacefully walked into the arms of our father. During my time spent working in his place, I'd see glimpses of him everywhere from getting out of the parking lot to working behind the counter, finding papers and key tags and such. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention, in the midst of those two that were sick in the family, late July of 2020, I was diagnosed with melanoma, which you can see on previous videos I shared my journey. I had surgery a month prior to my mom's surgery. All of those major things were gut punches, not only for me, but for their entire family. To witness the pain and grief on my family's face was way more than my heart could handle. You think about it. If someone's body slammed you and kicked you, it would take some time to recover. Get up, brush yourself off before you could even function. And once you did it, still take time to get your bearers and focus and adjust. So when I mentioned last week my struggle spiritually, I think this will add a little more context to the situation. My family and I were out of church the entire time, up until a few months after my father-in-law passed away, all due to what my family was going through alongside the pandemic. Simply put, church had no clue what my family had just been through. That's another story for another day. Just know, people were lost through the cracks of the pandemic. And I'm not just talking about my family. I'm just saying from my experience and just knowing people were lost, we have got to seek to find them. The weight of sharing this is heavy, I know, but I promise you, I'm well on the other side of it and so is my family. We've got some battle scars and a few other things happening along the way. Although it felt heavy, I know the Lord was there every step of the way. And nothing goes unwasted. Maybe you are walking through something now and can't find the words to talk about it. Maybe you ha you're holding back from some of the same very reasons as I mentioned. It's okay. Maybe you sense your spiritual stance affected during this season. Trust. Keep walking. You don't have to share right now or ever. Speak to the Lord. Use your gifts to release. You will be on the other side in a very short while, and I'm here cheering for you. <laughs>